I found some spare hard drives in the cupboard and I decided and they're going to add them to my FreeBSD main machine. And I think I've discovered a, a novel way to do it. We'll find out after the intro. We'll begin this by unboxing this nice little caddy. Uh, it takes two two and a half inch drives. Uh, that slot uh, in the top and the bottom and in itself it slots into the where the disk drive used to be if you had a disk drive um, Okay, so what we get inside is Instructions uh, black and white nothing fancy and just gives you the basic uh, outline of it Two drives two inch uh, trailer salt swap mobile rack backplane and there's the picture Nice and nice and you get two well i kind of they, they like protective stickers that go on to the back of the uh the hard drives which uh i'll use on on them and for the thing itself uh it's nice and weighty made out of metal and uh yeah two buttons there that you press to uh, unlock the doors that swing open and two leds on the other side very nice yeah, okay, that's good. We'll see what else we've got in there. If I can get it open. Right, but wires, of course. They've got the connector cables, some SATA, to uh, Molex, I think, by the looks of that. Uh, two of them, and a multi one there. Interesting. Two SATA cables. Because you never have enough cables. And a little bag of screws. Okay, that's nice. And this is the machine itself that we're going to be fixing it on. Uh, oh, a damaged USB 3 there. I'll have to fix that later. Uh, FreeBSD stickers. I thought I've got a Blu-ray. DVD writer. Another tray uh, for three and a half inch, uh, well, five and a quarter inch drives. A uh, SD card reader. And the empty slot there, which uh, we're going to be using. Very nice. So here it is, all wired up. Uh, it looks kind of like messy, but uh, that's where the Molex uh, power goes in, and it feeds onto the drives itself, and then onto the LEDs. And it goes in there. Fixing these are always the best part. And I'll do the other side in a minute. Right, here we are, it's all fixed in, all nice and neat. That's the entirety of the front taken up now, which is uh, quite nice. Little doors there, look. Uh, I'm going to put some of the spare drives I found, I'll put them in the top. Ah, yeah, it's a little, you have to, uh, you have to position it right, or it won't close. Oh. There you go. And we'll put the bottom one in. And it's tough little... Right, there you go. Very nice. Press the button, springs open. Press the button, springs open. Very nice and neat. Actually, I changed my mind on one of the drives. I want to use one as a scratch drive. So I'm just going to put it into the bottom one instead of the... Uh, the uh, hard drive that I put in, and this one won't be taken out. Okay, this is the uh, setup that I have at the moment. I've got ADA1, ADA2, and ADA3. And what I want to do is label the new ones uh, 4 and 5. So if we look at the D message, and there's ADA4 and ADA5 of the two drives I put in. The ADA4 being the uh, Kingston SSD. And if I can find it, the bottom one is the Atachi, the uh, spinning one. Hmm. The speed is not fantastic, 150, but then it's just a backup drive. In the top one is going to be the uh, scratch, scratch disk. 
Right. Using do as, because some people have been commenting that I shouldn't actually uh, be using SU, I'm going to use said or sadie. This is a BSD config partition editor. I could use the command line, of course, um, but I'm going to use this one. Right, I'm just going to delete the stuff that was on the drives as it was. I don't need to use them. And I do create. First is going to be on the SSD. Just going to change the GPT first, actually. Change it from MBR to uh, GPT. Okay. Now we can create. Right, I'm just going to enable trim. And mount point. I'm going to... Um, I want to put it on M mount and call it scratch, I think. That's... Uh, Good enough name. So I don't forget which one it is. That'll do. And for the backup drive, which is a spinning metal one, um, I'm just going to go down to and call it uh, MNT or Mount Backup. Highly original names, but it helps me remember which is which. And that's it. And press finish, commit, and all done. Just let it do its magic. There you go. I know I could have used the command line to do it using gpart, etc., but um, I've never really used this one for uh, partitioning before, and we'll see how it works. Right, so I'm just going to create some uh, mounts to this, so. Okay, and we'll do one for uh, the backup. Okie dokie. And, okay, let's have a look at the uh, FS tab. Oh, file system table in case you wanted to know what it was. And, oh, look at that. At the bottom, it's already done for you, which is nice. Yeah, that's very nice, actually. So rather than having to put them in manually, uh, that said, or Sadie, actually did it for me. Very nice. I just like to put these little hashes in to uh, divide the area up so I know which bits I've just added. Save that. Clear. And we're just going to mount the file system. Mount A, we'll uh, mount everything, or mount all, and bada boom, there it is at the bottom. So we've got the scratch and backup mounted. Painless, very nice indeed. And on the desktop, I've added a couple of uh, links to the drives. I've got the scratch disk and the backup. Of course, there's nothing on them at the moment. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna point everything that uses the scratch disk, say for instance, Caden Live and Inkscape, etc., to use that. And backup. Well, backup. I'll probably be using uh, Rsync or something similar. I haven't really thought about it yet. And that's it. All very nice and neat, and relatively easy actually. Very good. And for those with curiosity, this is what it looks like uh, with both drives running. The, uh, it's hard to say with the LEDs, but the the flashing away. The, well, the bottom one is anyway. The scratch dish. I hope you liked this video. It was a little bit different. Um, I don't normally cover hardware on this channel, but I'm thinking that maybe I should. Um, as long as it's FreeBSD related. Nothing major. Peripherals at first, and we'll see how it works. But anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.